In this video, I'm gonna tell you about the hidden secret behind investor ROI. And this is something that took me a few years to figure out. In fact, it's something that I only learned this year. But once I learned it, it did completely change the way I looked at and approached film investment. So I wanna take you through you know, how I came to realize this and the effect that it's had on me and my approach to film investment and going out and seeking funding from investors. So about 12 months ago, um, I was approached by some producers that we had worked with um, on a feature film. We'd made a film together and they wanted to make their second film. And the first film that they made, um, we financed through a combination of like private equity. So there was a decent chunk of private in there and then a tax rebate, a distribution guarantee, and some investment from like post-production and producers. So kind of the typical independent model. And the film had been released and the investors had got some of their money back, but not all of their money back. And so these producers wanted to make a new project, a new film, sorry, and they wanted to adapt a novel. So they wanted to go out and get the rights to a novel and adapt that into a screenplay and then go and make that into a film. And so we were thinking about how we were going to do this. And the one thing that became obvious pretty quickly was that, number one, it was going to be a much bigger budget than the previous film. Um, and number two, we would require money for development. Right, there was got you know we'd need to bring in a scriptwriter to adapt the novel. Um, we wanted to, to bring in a much more established director. Um, so ideally, we would have some some money to pay them so that they could really commit. Um, we'd want to bring in a script consultant. We'd want to do some work on like creating the assets to eventually go and raise finance. So there was like all these development expenses that we had in mind um, that we would need for the for the development of the film. So. The first thing that we did is we went and optioned the rights. That was relatively inexpensive and we just financed it ourselves. But then when it got to the next stage, it was like when you would need a decent chunk of money. So luckily being in Australia, there are development funds available. You can apply to some of the government bodies here for development funding. But of course, it's super competitive. So we applied and we got through the first round, but then we got rejected. And we got some feedback. It was quite you know, some good feedback was in there as well. Um, a lot of it based on the script. So again, we knew the script needed work, but we had no money. And so one of the co-producers of the film said, well, why don't I just go and ask the investors from the last film? Like, why don't I go and ask them to see if they would invest in development? And part of me was a bit kind of skeptical at first because I was like, well, they haven't got all their money back from the first film. The first film's kind of still in release, so that's still like happening. Maybe it's like too fresh for them, um, too soon. And, you know, maybe they want to see like how the rest of this first film plays out. Regardless, um, the co-producer went and pitched them, which kind of like found which ones, found out which ones were interested. There was about six that invested in the first film. And then um, got two of them in a room, pitched them this new project. Um, one of them said, no, you know, like money's tied up. I'm kind of investing in a bunch of other stuff at the moment, um, but kind of come back to me for production funding. And the other one said yes. And it was really interesting because deve like, development is higher risk than production. So, you know, you don't even know if a film's gonna get financed when you're funding development. It's like such an early stage of the production process and it's even higher risk than production because at least if an investor's putting money in for production investment, they know that that money is going to be spent on production and at the end they're going to have a finished film that can be sold. At the end of development, all you actually have is a script. And so there's no way of knowing if that film's ultimately going to get financed. So it's much higher risk in that way. But this investor said yes. And so he put in money for development. We were able to hire the screenwriter, bring in a really established director, bring in a script consultant, start to do some of the preliminary like asset creation work. And now that project is like well on the way to um, completing development and then us going out to try and raise finance for the film. And so it just got me thinking like, how is it that you can have an investor invest in a film that 
film doesn't make back all of their money, but then they're willing to invest in an even higher risk stage of the production process and get involved in the project. And really, when I looked at it, what it came down to was that even though the investor hadn't received a positive ROI on the dollar investment that they made, they received a positive ROI on the emotional investment that they made. And what I mean by that is they felt that the support that they gave on the first film was paid back to them by the producers. And the way it was paid back was because all the way through the production of that first film, the producers were always in communication with the investors, always inviting them to things like, you know, to come down on set, you know, holding, like taking them out for lunch, um, doing private screenings for them, really being in contact, like sending these great updates every month, these really tailored emails. Um, even when it came down to like sending out royalty reports, there were like custom royalty reports that they made that had like the film's logo and, and um, font type and all that sort of stuff. So these investors were looked after the whole way through. And so they felt that they had this emotional uh, return on their investment. And it was really interesting because when you look at the type of people that invest in film, this is just speaking from experience, but typically it's an older demographic. Typically it's like baby boomers. You know, they're older, they are much more set up in terms of their wealth. They have, and you know, as a result, they have disposable income, income that they can use to invest in different things, different causes, um, and obviously in something like high risk like film. And for them, you know, investing in a film is as much about the experience. You know, it is something that they've never done before and they're getting towards a later stage of their life. And this is like a new experience for them. And they're able to use their wealth, the money that they've accumulated over their life to not only support someone to create this thing, but then to also have this experience going along on the journey of this film being created. And so I think as producers, if you can make that experience really worthwhile for them, then even if they don't get the commercial return on their investment, as long as they get the emotional return on their investment, you're going to have a much greater chance of having those investors invest into the next film or the next project that you want to make. And that's something that really is like a golden egg for a producer or a filmmaker. If you can have investors who are continually investing in your projects and supporting your work, then that's gonna set you up for a much longer term career than you would otherwise have. And the flip side of that is, you know, I've heard this story once of these, um, an investor who invested in a film and the one thing that they really wanted was to be able to come to set and bring one of their kids to set. That was like a huge part of why they invested in the film. And after some time, they hadn't heard much about the film, so they got in touch with the filmmaker and they were like, you know, when are you shooting? Because I want to come down, obviously bring the kid. And, and the filmmaker was like, oh, we've already shot the film. Like, it's already done. And so that investor, like that experience for them is going to be really negative. And so they're not only not going to invest in that person's film again, but they're probably never going to invest in a film again. And so not only do we want to like make sure investors have good experiences so that they can continue to invest in our projects, but I think there's almost like a duty as filmmakers to do this so that investors actually have better experiences investing in film and they want to do that more because ultimately getting private equity into in independent films is like the most vital and the hardest part of the financing process. And so if we can all make that a little bit easier for ourselves, because like word of mouth travels so fast. So if an investor has a great experience, they're gonna tell other people, they're gonna wanna tell other people that they put something money into something, that they had this great experience, that they were able to help in creating this product. And that is just gonna like spread and spread and spread. So this was a real kind of revelation for me this year and it's really changed the way that I 
think about not just approaching investors, but the investor relations side of the equation. Like, how do you manage that relationship throughout one to two years of a production process? Because it can be that long. And so what are the things that you can do along the way to make sure that's a really positive experience for the investor? So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to be notified when we post a video and drop some comments in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of this video and if you have any um, tips or hints for other filmmakers about how you can improve your relationships with investors. All right, I'll see you on the next one.